Good morning, Bhargav and Uday. Today is Tuesday, the 19th of December, and today's production to our clients consisted of a total of 85 issues. I will be briefing you on the major issues of today's production. Hey, Mithma, thank you. Can we please discuss the major issues, please? Of course. In the East Asia Pacific, we covered a total of 40 issues. I'll be covering the top two of the 40 issues now. In Papua New Guinea, a Papua New Guinea Defence Force investigation team is examining the death of a soldier who was allegedly shot by uh, police in Tari, Hela province on December 17th. A total of nine police officers reportedly involved in the shooting have been arrested so far. And this incident involving a collaboration between the Papua New Guinea Defence Forces and Police for Security in the Highlands aims to address any criminal aspects and preserve the positive relationship between the two forces. The deceased soldier belonged to the Papua New Guinea Defence Forces Intelligence Team in Hela. We covered this as the major development in the Australasia and Pacific Islands roundup today. Uh, thanks, Mithma. Let's keep a close eye on this because tensions between the police and military have in the past uh, resulted in violence and there could be the potential for retaliatory attacks over this incident uh, despite the mediation between um, authorities. Thanks. Of course, Sudeh. And moving on to Indonesia, we have dozens of students from the Alliance of Student Executive Bodies from Central Java and Yongkata region who held demonstrations in Surakarta, Java yesterday. Uh, these students called for an evaluation of the nine years of President Joko Widodo's regime and criticized the Constitutional Court's decision, which allowed regional heads under 40 years old to become presidential and vice presidential candidates. Uh, the students also invited the president's son and vice presidential candidate, Gibran Rakabooming Raka, to a debate. They expressed dissatisfaction with the perceived ethical violations to secure his candidacy, and uh, they criticized the constitutional court's decision, which allowed him to become a vice presidential candidate. Thanks, Mithra. Yeah, another thing to keep an eye on, uh, especially as the elections come ahead. Anis Baswedan, one of the presidential contenders, has been quite uh, vocal about his criticism uh towards this issue so let's see how much further it gets politicized and whether it will help or whether it will influence the electorate in the upcoming elections Thanks. of course so they will continue to monitor this issue uh in South Asia, we covered a total of 28 issues today I'll be covering the top two of these 28 developments now uh, in Bangladesh, the main opposition, the Bangladesh Nationalist Party and other parties, which included the Ganatantra Mancha and Bangladesh Jamaat Islami, will hold nationwide shut uh, will hold a nationwide shutdown strike today. The strike started at 6 a.m. local time this morning, and it will be in place until 6 p.m. local time. The strike action is, de is to demand the cancellation of the general election, the resignation of the ruling Awami League party, the installation of a neutral caretaker government for the election, and the release of all arrested BNP leaders and workers. This is the fourth strike program by the BNP since October 28th, in addition to a 22-day blockade program in 11 phases. We covered this as the major development in, in the South Asia Roundup today. All right. So more such rallies is unlikely to move Hasina government, it seems. However, uh, can you please uh, ask one of the team members to get back to me with what is a official position and the succession plan as well, please? Thank you. Of course, Bhargav, I will brief the team on uh, that. Uh, moving on to India, the National Investigation Agency has arrested eight suspected Islamic State operatives. This is following a coordinated raid at 19 locations in Karnataka, Jharkhand, Maharashtra and New Delhi yesterday. In a statement by the NIA, they foiled the plans of the Islamic State Balari module to carry out terror acts, including improvised explosive device blasts. The accused were allegedly targeting college students for recruitment and communicating via encrypted apps for the jihad. The NIA seized raw materials used for making explosives, and this included sulfur, potassium nitrate, charcoal, gunpowder, and ethanol. Additionally, sharp-edged weapons, unaccounted cash, incriminating documents, smartphones, and other digital devices were also recovered during the raids. 
Well, it is a concern that they were able to track down so many of the terror modules involved in recruitment, uh, which also tells me that the level of polarization is of a high concern for the government uh, and uh, for everybody involved, uh, all the major stakeholders, including the people across the board in states like Karnataka and Jharkhand. Uh, what is also to be noted is that the NIA is an effective agency which has been able to crack down periodically and very much in time before a major terror attack is carried out. And uh, that can be noted with uh, with their track record in the last uh, three to five years. Uh, no major city has been hit by any such terror modules. Uh, let's keep a close eye on uh, such developments in India. Thank you. Uh, thank you for those insights, Bhargav. Uh, now, moving on to the EMEA region, we covered a total of 11 issues today. I'll be covering the top two of the 23, uh, pardon me, I'll be covering the top two of the 11 developments that we covered today. In Yemen, a US-led naval coalition force has been launched in response to Houthi maritime attacks. This coalition, which is codenamed Operation Prosperity Guardian, comprises of the US, the UK, Bahrain, Canada, France, Italy, Netherlands, Norway, Seychelles, and Spain. Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates have refused to join the coalition. Meanwhile, two commercial shipping vessels were attacked by suspected Houthi militants in the Red Sea yesterday. We conveyed this to our clients via an advisory message today. All right. The coalition and its uh, deployment was expected. And this is the second time that they're being uh, called in. Uh, the last time they wanted to su suppress uh, the... Somali piracy in the same region, uh, they were able to do so, but it took a few years to do so. The last major piracy was the, uh, was in 2017. So let's monitor the situation on the ground. And it's also interesting that Saudi Arabia and the UAE have decided to stay out. I guess they have had enough of humiliating stalemates brought on by the by the well-skilled, able uh, fighters from Houthi uh, rebel group and uh, ably equipped by Iran. So monitor the situation closely, please. Of course, Bhargav. Moving on to the Israel-Palestine conflict, around 19,453 Palestinians and 1,200 Israelis have died. Approximately 52,286 Palestinians and 3,500 Israelis have also been injured. Over 1.9 million Palestinians have been displaced. Uh, Yoav Galant yesterday said that Israel will gradually transition to the next phase of military operations in Gaza. This was after meeting with the U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin, who expressed the need for low intensity combat to reduce civilian casualties. All right, it seems that the Israeli government is unfazed by the attacks uh, from Houthi rebels in the Red Sea area, and the international stakeholders are unable to uh, pressure Netanyahu into a ceasefire. Um, so let's uh, let's Advise the team to monitor this closely and advise our clients accordingly, please. That's pretty much it from my end. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today, Bhargav. If we don't have Thanks. any other comments, we can wrap up. Yeah. Thanks, Bhargav. Thank you.